What if I told you that a surgeon opened up a patient's abdomen, sliced through their small intestine, cleaned it, removed damaged parts, and sewed them back up again? You'd no doubt be impressed. But what if I told you that it happened in the third century and with only a little anesthetic? Long before antibiotics or even a general understanding of infectious bacteria, Hua Tuo, the legendary Chinese physician, was performing complex surgical operations centuries ahead of time. Surgeries that even in the modern world are not without risks. But how far have we come from the miracle medical work of Hua Tuo? Let's explore the past, present, and future of life-saving surgery. Hua Tuo's life is the stuff of legends. How he acquired his medical skills is a mystery. There are conflicting origin stories and even some speculation that the man was really just a myth. One story says that he traveled to Zhu Chao to study under a famous doctor named Kai. Another says Hua Tuo was given a book by two mysterious old men he encountered in a mountain cave. Hua Tuo received the book with a stern warning that the knowledge he found within it would bring him nothing but trouble. Hua would go on to treat patients far and wide with advanced acupuncture techniques. But if a sickness was concentrated internally where the effect of acupuncture needles and other medicines couldn't reach it, Hua Tuo would decide to operate. Hua Tuo is on record as the first person in China to use anesthesia during surgery. He used a general anesthetic that combined wine with an herbal concoction called mafei San, literally translated as cannabis boil powder. Once his patients were unconscious, Hua would make an incision and remove diseased tissue. If the disease were found in the intestines, he would sever them and wash them out, after which he would stitch the abdomen together and rub on an ointment. The patient would gradually regain full consciousness, with pain gone within a few days, with patients healed and back to normal in about a month. It's important to understand that at this time period, most medical treatments were administered externally, with internal operations operations being a last resort. Confucianism abhorred any mutilation of the body. In traditional Chinese medicine, the main influences on the body are the heavens and nature. It is believed that disease is caused by the disruption of a patient's life forces, qi and yin yang. Knowledge of anatomy wasn't as important when medical practitioners believed an illness could be cured by externally rebalancing those life forces inside the body. The cutting open of bodies was generally considered lowly and workmanlike. Hua's glorified status was an exception to the rule. In the end, Hua Tuo's surgical gifts and medical instincts are what led to his demise. He died at the hands of the tyrant and warlord Tao Tao, who had seized power from the last Han Emperor. Hua didn't survive, and unfortunately, neither did his writings. With his medical writings destroyed, it seems any Chinese tradition of surgery also perished. While Hua Tuo was ahead of his time, eventually the rest of the world would begin to catch up. As time passed, surgical technology and technique would continue to improve. As most things in the modern world, surgery has already been impacted by the development of advanced robotics. The Puma 560 was a cutting edge, revolutionary surgical system in the 80s, but it still required a great deal of assistance from human personnel and additional surgical tools. The systems in use today are more advanced, requiring less assistance from additional surgical staff. Robotic surgery systems have many benefits over the traditional methods. While cutting a patient open isn't seen as lowly or unskilled work anymore, today, minimally invasive surgery is the ideal. With a smaller operating arm, robotics help a surgeon to perform small, complex movements that would have previously only been possible through open surgery. This means smaller incisions and less risk of exposure to infection. Today, many complex surgeries are completed with the assistance of robotic systems. From head and neck surgery, to deal with tumors of the throat and tongue, to chest surgery for conditions affecting the lungs, to heart surgeries like coronary artery bypasses. There are modern surgeries that aren't even possible without the assistance of robotic surgical equipment. The very nature of these operations requires the access, perspectives, and tools that advanced robotics provides. Advanced robotics and AI-assisted surgeries allow surgeons to perform life-saving operations from almost anywhere. This creates opportunities for wounded soldiers to receive life-saving operations from surgeons halfway around the world. These kinds of advancements can't be understated. There are countries in the world 
with very limited surgical access, where finding a trained surgeon is almost impossible. But finding a computer interface and a robotic device that we could send them to do the procedure is much more feasible. My colleagues would be thrilled to do surgeries in developing nations if they could do them from their offices or their operating suites. It's much harder for them to take a week off and travel to a developing nation to perform the same operation. While the advances in robotic surgery have been impressive, newer systems that are in development look to take things even further. Researchers from the University of California, Berkeley are currently working on making robots that could perform a range of low-level surgical tasks without the need for human indirect control. Using many of the same technologies that power self-driving cars, autonomous drones, and robots, researchers are working to automate surgical robots too. This is all part of a much larger effort to bring artificial intelligence intelligence into the operating room. Experts believe that the assistance of AI can help reduce the surgery failures and inefficiencies that lead to poor outcomes. However, there are limitations to surgery without surgeons. Surgery is as much an art as it is a science. Human surgeons are tasked with making extremely difficult decisions while operating. Similar to how self-driving cars have to make tough split-second decisions during, let's say, a horrible auto collision, AI surgeons would be faced with difficult decisions while a patient or patient's lives hang in the balance. Should an AI surgeon perform a life-saving surgery on a vital organ if the operation has a high chance of causing neurological damage? Should an organ donor's health be prioritized over the life-saving organ they're donating? These would be difficult ethical and medical questions for trained human beings, but AI would have to be programmed to address these with little, if any, human oversight. But there are often surprises during surgery. What happens, for example, if the patient has been consented for one procedure, and yet during the course of the surgery, the surgeon discovers something else is wrong? So you go in to have your heart treated, you have a heart problem, and they discover a tumor. And the tumor removal might be a high-risk procedure on its own. Now, do they wake you up again and perform the surgery again with significant risk? Or do they simply go ahead and do the second procedure? Now, AI will have to make those decisions the same way surgeons now make those decisions, but AI doesn't have the same value structure that surgeons have. We have mentioned the example of self-driving cars. Self-driving cars have many more ethical implications than people think about. The car has to decide, for example, whether if there's going to be a collision to put the driver at risk or put a pedestrian on the road or another driver at risk. And these same issues come up with robotics and surgery. To what degree do you risk one form of danger to the patient or one negative outcome against another? Some patients might be willing to take a large risk in order to survive, and others might be willing to take less of a risk if there's a real possibility they'll survive but be severely injured or incapacitated. Doctors can talk to the patient and figure out exactly what the patient wants and then act accordingly in the OR. How AI will do that remains a puzzle for many of us. There is a trade-off between precision, which AI gives you, and trust in humanity, which a live doctor gives you. People, on the one hand, may want the precision that AI or robotics can generate, but they also want to have the sense that a real human being, a surgeon, cares about their outcome. The absence of that may change how people view surgery. To be candid, it may increase the rate of malpractice claims, as people don't feel a human connection with the person taking care of them. AI and robotics hold out a lot of promise, but it's important to be somewhat cautious because most scientific advances and medical achievements occur in fits and starts. And I think a good analogy is to the early transplant programs, where many of the early transplant recipients died on the table, but the outcome in the long run was a revolution in transplant medicine. There are going to be fits and starts with robotics as well, and some patients in the short term may have negative outcomes, but the result is going to be large-scale benefit for the rest of us over the long term. Along with AI-assisted robotic surgeries, researchers are developing tiny surgical robots known as nanobots. These nanobots would go into the patient's body and cure diseases by roaming inside the body. Researchers at the University of California, San Diego, develop nanobots coated with gold nanowire. This gold coating enables nanobots to freely roam through blood so they can absorb or destroy pathogenic bacteria without messing with the patient's natural defenses. Researchers believe that nanobots designed to mimic the behavior of natural cells with similar functionalities will be able to get past the human defense system. One day, nanobots could help shore up the immune system of the immunocompromised, helping stave off serious infection and illness. Researchers have already been able to successfully use nanobots to treat cancerous tumors in mice. The nanobots were able to successfully shrink tumors and inhibit their growth. So it's not impossible to imagine a future where these tiny robots might be treating human patients in similar or wildly imaginative ways.
space. Imagine an army of nanometer-sized machines traveling through a human body, able to monitor, repair, and support the health of a human 24-7. With this level of preventative care, nanobots could reduce or entirely eliminate the need for costly, dangerous surgeries. Simple nanobots could monitor the body and detect issues before they require serious intervention or care. Diabetics could get continuous updates on their blood sugar levels, and nanobots even have the potential to be insulin delivery systems. Having detailed information about what's happening inside of a body would help empower physicians to course correct treatment plans or help patients identify necessary changes to lifestyle choices and bad habits. Researchers are considering many ways nanobots could save lives. Nanobots could one day be a potential solution and preventative treatment for the number one cause of death in the United States, cardiovascular disease. One day, nano-sized robots could be assigned to patrol blood vessels, prevent and clear life-threatening blockages, protecting against strokes and heart attacks. It was once seen as savagery to open up a human body to operate and heal them. With nanobots doing the healing under the skin, it's fascinating to think about how things may seemingly come full circle. As we move into a future where nanorobots will hopefully be capable of repairing cells from the inside out, it might once again be seen as cruel and unnecessary to cut open a living creature in order to heal it. Just as Hua Tuo's methods might have looked like magic to the uninformed masses of his time, it's not impossible to imagine we'd see the incredible, invisible work of nanorobotics in the same way. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel right now and ring the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any great content. And look for CuriosityStream on social media. Links in the description.